everybody, Mike McWilliams, Upscares to the Ride Music. When we say the name Vox, we automatically conjure in our minds a fantastic uh, tube amplifier uh, that has been used on countless recordings by some fantastic bands. Uh, for example, the Beatles, the Kinks, the Rolling Stones, Rory Gallagher used it quite a bit. Uh, the list just goes on. Brian May, of course, who can forget Brian May, that classic Queen sound. Uh, the list just goes on and on. Introduced in 1958 by Tom Jennings and Dick Derringer, uh, the AC-15 and its successor, the AC-30, became synonymous with the 60s rock and roll sound. Now, whereas these are the more well-known uh, Vox amps of that period. Uh, of course, Vox had other amps in their line, and uh, one of them was the AC4. So let's talk a little bit about that one today and its uh, modern successor. First introduced in 1961, it went through several changes to it settled on its final iteration by 1964. It was a 6-watt amp uh, powered by one EZ80 rectifier tube, one EL84 tube, one 12AX7 tube, and one EF86 tube. Uh, it had an 8-inch speaker and an open back uh, design to it. Uh, this was the most popular version of the AC4 by 1964. It sold over 3,000 uh, units. And uh, it's been said that it was the amp that Paul McCartney used backstage uh, as the tuner for his uh, pre-show uh, tunings, I guess. So unfortunately, due to some financing issues, uh, the Vox Corporation, as it was known in the 60s, ceased to exist. Uh, the company continued on being sold and traded by many companies to currently it's owned by the Core Corporation. Now, under the supervision of the Vox label, these are now made in China. Uh, today, we have a fine example of the modern version of the AC4. This is the AC4C112. So being brand new amp here at Upstairs to the Ride Music, you know we're going to put it through its paces. So let's open her up and take a look inside. Now I do know inside that it has two 12AX7s and one EL84 tube. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to swap out those 12AX7s for some classic GEs. And uh, we're going to take a look at the speaker and see if that passes snuff. Also, I'm kind of interested in the fact that the older AC4s, as I said, had an open back design. Uh, this modern version of it has a closed back design. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see if I might make some modifications to that down the line as well. Anyway, we'll plug it in in the end and see how it sounds. We'll use my 1984 Telecaster this time. I think single coils are more fitting for this amp. I'll play uh, just regular uh, chords, uh, nothing fancy, no single lines or anything like that, just to get clean, uh, just to get a general taste of flavor for how she sounds. I hope you stick around. Here we go. Okay, so here we are with the, uh, the Vox uh, AC4C112. Um, as you can see, the back of it has an extraordinary amount of uh, screws in it uh, to keep the back uh, chassis in place. Um, one thing that I noticed uh, when I was uh, demoing it, when I first bought it, is that this chassis gets quite warm. Uh, it does have a ventilation here at the top, uh, but uh, to be frank with you in here, a little ventilation hole at the bottom, which, you know, is sufficient but this thing gets super hot. And also, um, I'm more of a fan of open back, uh, you know, 112 uh, cabs, uh, combo cabs. Uh, I think that uh, you get a much better sound. Uh, the resonance obviously changes if you take this back off. So not only am I gonna change the tubes in this thing, uh, but also uh, I'm gonna see if this thing can, can put itself back together again without this back chassis. But in any case, uh, let's open her up. Uh, here, by the way, are the tubes that I'm going to be using. Uh, these are uh, vintage RCA tubes, uh, courtesy of our good friend Funky Pat. Uh, these are been matched, so we know they're good to go. So we're gonna take this back off and we're gonna see where we're at. Uh, should be interesting. 
Okay, so inside uh, we have the Vox VX12 speaker. This is actually the Vox 7080. It's just been rebranded uh, by Vox. Uh, so this is the Celestion uh, 7080. Um, but in any case, uh, we're going to be replacing this, and not this video, but in another video, I'm actually taking this out and I'm going to be putting in uh, my other vintage uh, Celestion uh, G12. M. So uh, that's certainly going to be a completely different thing. My only concern here is that this chassis is pretty close up on on this uh, top here, and the uh, the the Celestion uh, G12M has a pretty much a much higher magnet. So I'm wondering if there's going to be enough clearance there. Uh, and another thing that, like I said, is that I prefer an open back. Uh, structure with my amps and uh, this is supported it, it, it's in there it's not the greatest if I want to just completely do without this this back to it um, so but it's not the it's not the best it's not really designed for that I mean it'll work uh, you can certainly get away with it and I think that will also solve a lot of the heating issues so as you can see, um, I was able to maneuver this so at least I have access to the underside of the chassis. Um, inside here we have uh, two uh, 12X7s and one EL84. So I won't be changing uh, the EL84 today. I'm more interested in getting uh, these 12X7s out and replacing them with these RCAs. Undo this crown, oh there we go, so a little plastic dealy here that that held that in place, that's kind of interesting, never seen that before, yeah, pretty cool, uh, so we'll put that aside, and rock this gently, and we'll see what we got here. Uh, <laughs> It says 12X7B China, uh, not quality, I mean I'm sure uh, they're fine, as you know most of these tubes are made in China these days anyway, um, so I'm, I'm sure that putting these uh, vintage RCAs uh, here in, in, the, in here is going to make a big difference. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about this EL84 right now. I actually have some EL84 tubes coming that I'm going to be swapping uh, out of my uh, Wangs uh, here in a minute. So uh, that one can wait for today. But for today's experiment, I think the most important thing is seeing if changing that tube in the V1 position uh, really makes a difference to the sound. I'm going to tell you probably it, it really definitely is. Uh, so let's do that. Let's replace it with the RCA tube. So we will gently line that up. Rocker in there. Nice and snug. There we go. Yeah. Um, let's Clip her back, put this little plastic condom piece <laughs> that they, they devised here to hold this in place back in. Um, it's not really necessary, but I'm sure it helps. All right, uh, let's do the same with this one. Slip this uh, tube condom off <laughs> and take this, rock this out of its chassis. Gentle rock here, be very careful boys and girls when you're doing this. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like a, a bad tube, it doesn't look cheap. Um, it's certainly... Uh, not in the same league as this vintage RCA. Uh, so yeah, I think we're definitely going to hear a difference here. Um, boy, it is amazing the amount 
of cheap Chinese uh, 12AX7 tubes I have now. Unfortunately, my stock of vintage ones is dwindling and uh, my stock of uh, cheap ones is increasing, but that's okay. It's because I'm replacing them in my amps. I once again want to thank Funky Pat for being kind enough to send me a stock of these, quite an impressive amount. I settled on these RCAs because I think they'll break up quite nicely in this amp. Um, matter of fact, I'm sure of it. Yeah, that's in. All right. Put this little cap back on. Make sure it's lined up. A funky little system, but it works. All right, so like I said, uh, I wish while I had this open that I could uh, swap out this uh, EL84 as well, but I'm sure it'll do. I think uh, our main difference is going to be had here and swapping out the 12AX7s. So um, anyway, uh, just taking a look at the wiring job here now. This is made in China, but it's done under the supervision of a Vox. As you know, these Vox amps were uh, originally uh, hand-wired in the UK uh, back in the day. Uh, I'm sure sometime around the 90s that that no longer became the case, that they shipped over to China, their production. However, again, it is under this again it is under the supervision of a Vox UK so it looks pretty 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 sweet wiring here um, it looks like a very very uh, professional job it's not a rat's nest at all um, very good looking all right so there we go uh, we have uh, taken out these uh, made in China uh, 12AX7s, we've placed it with our vintage GEs. Uh, we'll close it back up again and uh, let's see if there's a sound difference. Again, uh, my intention is to replace uh, this uh, Celestron 7080 speaker. Um, it's not a bad sounding speaker, it's not a bad speaker at all. However, I know for a fact that the minute I slip my uh, vintage uh, G12M in here, uh, that's going to make a huge difference. Again, like I said, I'm a little concerned about the clearance because the magnet on the, those older Celestians are a lot bigger. Um, uh, this is a very fairly uh, compact uh, top here on this uh, magnet on top of this speaker. I don't know if I'm going to have clearance or not. Uh, that may be a problem. Uh, I won't uh, worry about it too much. For right now, I don't plan on doing that for a while. We'll do that for another video. So for right now, we'll keep the stock uh, 7080 in there. Uh, we'll close this up and uh, let's take a listen and see uh, what kind of difference swapping those 12AX7s out made. All right, so we got the back back on. Um, let's take another look at, uh, at these tubes, these AX7s I pulled out. As I was putting the back on, I thought to myself, these are probably, more than likely, these are probably rubies. They're just not branded. Uh, they probably come out of the same factories as rubies does. Um, so they're not bad tubes. Um, they're just, you know, you can do better. You can do far better. And uh, so, uh, very interesting for you people out there, folks that were curious what uh, tubes were in here. I'm sure the EL84 is again an unbranded Ruby as well. Uh, so we'll be swapping that out when I get my uh, new stock of those in. Uh, but for right now, those uh, G's are probably gonna do a world of good for this amp. Uh, let's uh, plug her in and see if the patient's still alive, Jim.
your support by subscribing and hitting the like button. See you later. See you later. See you later.